Okay. Hi, right, folks. Today, what we're going to do is answer emails. Um, people are sending us things and asking questions about stuff. So I, it's a good time to take care of things like that. The lady said, how do you tie a horse to a trailer and keep him from pond? Well, there's a lot of answers to that, but I'll show you one. This is one of the answers here. I don't mean to be a wiseacre, but that's just kind of a pretty good deal. If your horse is broke to hobbles, then he probably won't paw. I break all my horses to hobble so I can drop my lead rope and hobble them and saddle them and then somewhere down the road they might allow me to hobble them for one minute and get off and doctor something. Then I'll watch them lope home like a jackrabbit. But this will take care of the the one question. The other one is is what we call bar breaking. And that means you go catch your horse and you tie it up. If you got a high dollar fancy trailer like us, you don't want to tear up the fenders, so you just tie them up anywhere. It's called weaning. And what'll happen is they'll paw and whinny and run in circles and act like an idiot. And then after a while, they'll just stand there. That's kind of the point. So don't catch old Brownie and head for the local Jim Cannon with the ultimate state finals and you've never hauled your horse to town. You're just gonna you're just cutting your throat if you do that. So get them trained at home. That's what Ray Hammond used to say. You're supposed to train them at home. He'd see some idiot thumping on a horse. That's what he'd tell him. So there's the, the one answer. And I know there'll be a thousand people say, how do you make them hop, teach them to hobble? Well, we've got a video on that. we got videos on everything. If you want to see how to open a can of peaches, we got a video on it. So that's that one. Now, we're going to go over the, how do you haul horses down the road? How do you do it? What do you need to do? Okay. The first thing is, Deb and I have been to all four corners of the United States. Alright, so that puts a few miles under our belt. So when... When we haul horses, and I'm going to use the summertime because I'll guarantee you, if you haul horses in the snow and ice out on the interstates, you're dumber than a rock. We don't do that. Hell, I don't go north Albuquerque this time of year. So what I'm going to focus on is the summer. On the ranches, you got to haul whenever you need to haul, but they're out on a two-track road. It's not like you're going down I-10. So anyway, in the summertime, we get up about three when we're traveling I throw them a little hay not much and they've been in a horse motel or a rodeo grounds or a fairgrounds or someplace for the night and while Deb's getting her war paint on and getting ready to go I give them a chance to eat a little bit small flake okay they've been on water all night water's the whole secret to going down the road. Now, the big deal with me is the correct way to tie a horse in a trailer. We got stock trailers. It's not my fault if you got the tilled out three bedroom with the king size bed and no room for a horse. That ain't my fault. So what I do is I tie them so that the lead rope is long enough where they can back up away from the wind going down the interstate, but they can't get their head lower than their knee. And that way they don't start getting bothered and put their leg over the rope. And what I do is I come all the way down to here, not in front of them, and I tie it off. And if I'm hauling some terrorist that's going to untie my knot, I just put a lock on it. Okay, now I know where this is. So if I got to run back from the truck and I got a horse in trouble, 
I can undo it from out here. I don't have to come in the trailer and get in a really, really bad, dangerous position. Everybody's got a story about getting hurt. Well, when you're in this little deal here, it's like the triangle when you're roping. It's not a good place to be. So, the bucket can be cut if I need it to be. The back side of it's flat on one side. It's like my cousin's head. So you put half of it full of water, okay? Don't fill it all the way up. Unless you want to just clean your floor, because that's where it ends up, is on the floor. So you fill it half full, and you remember, it's a bucket per horse, so you can keep an eye on who's drinking what. All right, about 10 or 11 o'clock, we buy a bag of ice and dump it in the water. Because it's going to be 100 degrees. I always picture going across Texas in the summer with horses. And so you just dump a bag of ice in there and they'll play with it and they'll drink it and da da da. But you got to know that we also fill our palm up in the morning with salt. Then I just take it and rub it on their mouth like this and just get it on their gums and their tongue and then they'll drink water. We do not hang hay for our horses. Okay, if you load up at 3.30 or 4, you quit at 3 in the afternoon. Summertime, the hottest part of the day is around 4. So we always pull in. Get them in the shade. Get them in the shade, get them in the corral. They can roll, walk around. They got all afternoon and all night long to eat all the hay they want. When I go out in the morning to catch them, if there's no manure in the corral, we're in trouble. Okay, a horse will crap usually about 12 times a day. So you can kind of do the math on that. But this is what it looks like for a horse for us to go down the road. Now this is a 16 foot trailer and we can haul three horses comfortable in here. Alright, I put shavings down for a couple reasons. One of them is, is if they stretch out to pee, they'll pee easier on shavings than they will on a, a regular rubber mat. Because they don't like it splashing, neither does the other horses. The other one is, it gives you a cushion from the road vibration so they don't lose so much weight because they're going to lose about 50 but 50 pounds in the summertime going down the road so the shavings helps and uh, there's guys like john st ryan he puts straw down he won't put shaving because he don't want to dry their feet out well i don't care so there's the situation that's what it looks like and these horses always learn to stand diagonal them and uh, we don't use dividers. The divider deal, I see a lot of angle, slant load trailers they call them, and they have dividers. I personally don't like dividers. And I've seen the nightmare. The biggest nightmare is when a horse goes down and all his weight is against the divider and it happens to be the last horse and so now you got two other horses that are worried up ahead of him and you can't get to anything. You can start cutting ropes when you don't have any dividers. And you got to know that a lot of baby, maybe people don't know it, but on ranches, you load six, four, five, how many ever horses is going that day, saddled, in a trailer, no problem. You go as far as you're going to go. So hauling the horse with a saddle on, it's not like you go to cowboy hell for it. People in town get a little worried about that but the fact is ranchers have been doing that for a long time it seems like the dividers too they make the horse so locked in that he can't like back up and get out of the wind it's harder to, for him to get to his water yeah and another one they do is that horses stand with their legs spread because when you're going down the road that supports them okay so if you have a divider and it's kind of tight they end up sticking their foot like his left front foot would be over to the left and the, the next one would put his right front foot to the right and he would step on the coronet band of the first one. Okay, if you have no dividers, then they say, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You can hear him from the truck. And they get situated in the truck and then you go. So, let me check the list. Now the Holland deal, Deb, she gets on that phone of hers and there's horse motels all the way across the United States. 
So when we go that morning, we know that afternoon exactly where we're going. We go about 350 miles is yep. an average day for us. Because when you're hauling a lot of days in a row, it's easier on your horses. If you're just going to do one day trip, that's different. But going for weeks on end, it can get pretty hard. And I've found that in booking horse motels, if you book the day before, then you pretty much are assured of where you're going to be the ah, next okay. night and you're not going to be in trouble. And then you're, you're checked into your horse motel and your regular motel if you're staying in one and everything goes really smooth. One of our favorite places to stay is Amarillo. Because Deb, she always buys that big steak. <laughs> no, no. They would feed the family at 10. Well, there's a human motel, a horse motel, and the big Texan steakhouse in the same place. Yeah, that's kind of nice. You can get them a room plus turn the horses out. <laughs> Tell them about that lady we saw panhandling. Oh, in Amarillo, downtown. In fact, the road that you turn on would take you to the Amarillo Quarter Horse Association. There was a lady on crutches, and she had only one leg, and she was had her little sign because they asked for money got at a red lighter and it said I'm on my last leg <laughs> <laughs> we saw it as we went by I'd have, I'd have gave her some money if we'd had time to go back but we didn't <laughs> so that was a funny one she's standing there on her crutches one leg but anyway the the haul and horse deal you can make it as as hard as you want or you can make it as easy as you can and I'm telling you, we never had no big deals. Oh, one other thing we always hauled with us, we always have Bantamine paste, Butte paste, and a little horse first aid kit. So if something did get cut up, we can deal with it on the road before we, you know, before we find a vet. That's true. And the colican thing, you got to pay attention to that. That's why we don't hang hay for them. They drink water. Then yeah. they get hay. Oh, I think you should also go over this particular trailer, and many like it, if you're hauling one horse, you got a box stall on wheels. Yeah, we just turn them loose. And if you ever noticed, like hauling a stock rack or a trailer with a horse loose, they'll turn around just like he is, except he'll be the opposite way. His head will be there and he'll be diagonally across the floor. Yeah. That's a comfortable way the horses like to haul for some reason. But yeah, we pulled in a lot of places, just park in the parking lot and get Walk the horse around a bit. And um, he stays in the trailer all night. If we're between horse motels and just have the one horse. I mean, it can happen. Yeah, and I wanted to tell you about, it's kind of a part of bar breaking, is it? when Chinaco was a colt, we hauled him all the way across the United States with us. And by the time you've done that, 6,000 miles round trip, and all the semis, and all the noise, and all the lights, and all the cars. And getting get off, getting out. A different place every right. night. It makes them gentle. So... If you're curious about a horse and uh, all kinds of trouble, don't wait till the day of the fair. Start hauling the horse and hauling him around. Take him down to get the mail. Grocery shop. Get him broke. Okay. All right. So I think that covers that one. Now I'm going to tell you real quick about Ed Puckett. Ed Puckett was my grandpa, and I. I've told people before that whenever I meet some young man that wants to learn what I know or wants to hang around, I have to ask him if he had a grandpa. And a lot of young people now, it's sad to say, they say, no, I never had one. Well, how about a father? A lot of them say, no. Well, that's pretty sad, but the fact is, I had a grandpa. And uh, he was born in Burley, Idaho. He ran away when he was 14, like most kids did back then. They never made it past the sixth or eighth grade. And he started working on his own to get away from a mean father. Okay. I have a letter that he sent to my grandmother when they were courting. And he was working on the tunnel at the court, uh, uh, Grand Coulee Dam. And he told her, he said, I've got a really good boss. He said that when we get married, he's going to give us a brand new tent. <laughs> and I never forgot that. I mean, that was exciting to them yeah. as a young couple. And then they lived through the Depression, and they worked all the way from Washington State down to Santa Ana, California. And up north, they worked in the woods. And in the south, they picked oranges. In the San Joaquin Valley, they picked and worked in the packing houses. 
And the way it worked, they told me all these stories because I never would leave them alone. I loved the stories. And my grandma said everybody was broke, so it was just kind of, that's the way it was. All right, so you, if you had a potato, you'd throw it in. Everybody would make some kind of stew. But what I'm getting at is that it gave grandpa that humility and work ethic and grateful for what they had. When they finally were able to build their house, which they hand built out of brick in Core School, California, that was like heaven to them because they, they just knew in their hearts that they'd earned it. And that's the kind of stuff that makes you appreciate life and what you have. So as a kid, he taught me how to dig post holes and build fence and, you know, do everything you can do with your hands. And um, anyway, he was a big, big influence on my life. It was my grandpa. And uh, he even told me when he was little, they had the rabbit drives up there. And I, he called it Idaho, <laughs> where they'd get clubs and they'd pen them in a corner and they'd club all them rabbits because they were eating all the crops. So the stories never ended and I loved them. But anyway, that's one of them. And once again, you know, we've been at this probably five years, and I got to tell you, I feel like I know of everybody that watches it damn near because, you know, people get a hold of us. And it makes Deb and I feel very humble and very grateful for being acquainted with all you folks that watch this deal. So it means a lot to us. So thank you very much for everything you've done for us and everything you, you know, because it's just regular stiffs. That's what I always say. It's just regular working stiffs that watch our deal. There's no blue ribbon. It's all about being fair to a horse and handling cattle with some kind of dignity. And that's what we're all about. So, adios.